Hey guys, welcome to Wrestling Days and welcome to this Payback 2017 review. Now, I thought the show was okay. Um, it was really saved by the uh, last match, in my opinion. Um, I didn't see the pre-show, uh, but I did see that Enzo and Big Cass beat Gallows and Anderson. I also saw that Finn Balor made an appearance on Miz TV. Um, not sure if that's going to set up a match between those two, which could be quite interesting to see, actually. I'd be into that. Um, so I think that would be a good match for Finn. Um, and The Miz, you know, I mean, that's a big opponent for The Miz, um, for him to get his teeth into, you know, someone that he could really work with. Um, so, yeah, I'd be into that. But as I say, I, I didn't see that, so I'm not sure kind of uh, what's going to happen with that. But on the main show, uh, we had Jericho and Owens kick everything off, which surprised me. Um, I thought they would kick off with the cruiserweights. Um, and what surprised me even more was Jericho winning. Um, I thought it was done well. Loved how Jericho took Owen's uh, hand in the steps and like rammed the steps into it. And because um, obviously at WrestleMania, Owen's managed to just get his finger on the rope, um, and Jericho kind of took that away, if you will, so that he couldn't do that this time uh, by injuring his hand. And uh, yeah, that was it. Done. I think it was a submission actually. Uh, that uh, was it the walls of Jericho um, but yeah uh, that was it Owens tapped and uh, I think what's going to happen now is that Jericho will drop the title on Tuesday on Smackdown I think there'll be a rematch and uh, I think Jericho loses the belt there um, but I mean great way of doing it you know everyone expected Kevin Owens to win tonight so uh, if they can get just one more match out of Jericho before he does have to go on his tour, then uh, brilliant because it just gave us a nice moment uh, here tonight. So yeah, it was a big surprise, um, but a very, very cool one. And the match itself I thought was really strong. Uh, next we had Neville against Austin Aries, Cruiserweight uh, title match. I thought this match underwhelmed. It built and it certainly picked up pace and there were some nice moments and, you know, I thought they did well. This wasn't a bad match. I think that there was just um, quite a lot of expectation that it was going to steal the show and it was going to be, you know, a match of the year contender and all that kind of stuff. And, and it wasn't. Um, I, I really like the end, though. I really like the fact that Neville sacrificed winning the match to keep hold of his title. Uh, that's what a heel champion should do. Um, I just wish they had built up that 6-0 uh, pay-per-view streak of his um, before, because I didn't realise until, I think it was Michael Cole that mentioned it at the start of the match, that Neville was 6-0 on pay-per-views. Um, but, you know, Neville threw that away, threw that record away um, by losing this match just so he could keep hold of that championship. And I'd like to have seen them tell that story a little bit more. Um, but I thought it was really cool. Next match was the tag match. It was uh, Hardy Boys against Sheamus and Cesaro. Um, and it was a good match. Really good match. Fast paced. Nice teamwork. Um, Hardy Boys win. But really the talking point here was the Sheamus and Cesaro heel turn afterwards. Uh, which kind of knew was coming. It was in the predictions video and everything. Um, but it was still cool to see because I think Sheamus is better as a heel. And I'm interested to see Cesaro as a heel because he has been a heel before, but um, not for a while. And I'm interested to see, you know, what what that looks like in 2017. I was just wondering, as they were beating them up after the match, if this was the Hardy Boys becoming broken, uh, but it doesn't appear to be the case at this point. Um, we'll have to see, you know, what's said on Twitter, what happens uh, tomorrow on Monday Night Raw. Worth mentioning as well that Nakamura was being shown all over those backlash promos, you know, really it was just him. Um, and they're building up that this is going to be his in-ring debut. I mean, it's not for another few weeks, so I was quite surprised at that. But uh, the promos look really cool. They make Nakamura look like a million dollars, which he is. 
Um, so yeah, I thought I thought that was nice to see. Um, and then we got Bailey against Alexa Bliss Women's Championship uh, match, and this was in Bailey's hometown. Um, didn't know which way this was going to go. It ended up going to Alexa Bliss, who was as always amazing like the facial expressions the disgust and the disdain that she had for the crowd and the situation and you know the way she went over to Bailey's parents and she was like is this your daughter and then started slamming her into the apron in front of them um just it's absolutely brilliant um the match I thought was really strong as well there's some nice moments some beautiful sunset flips uh, the crowd were hot for this as well. The crowd were proper into it. Uh, commentators did a great job of telling the story about how Bailey uh, had seen superstars in that arena and waited for them afterwards. And they painted this picture of the hometown girl being in that arena, uh, waiting to meet the superstars. And it was just, it was a feel good moment that was ripped away by Alexa Bliss getting the victory. And that is exactly the right way to do it. It was a great moment. I absolutely love Alexa Bliss. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm totally on board with this. I thought they did it really well. Right, let's talk about it. Let's talk about uh, the elephant in the room and that is the House of Horrors match. This was God awful. Um, I, I really want to see them doing uh, pre-taped stuff. I think it's the right way forward. That's not my criticism. Um, and in fact, the start was, you know, it's mysterious, didn't know what was going to happen. They built the suspense quite nicely, but then it just went on too long. And it was the same thing again and again. It was just fighting in different rooms. Um, the end of it came when Wyatt uh, threw a refrigerator on top of Randy Orton. And I've seen some fantastic tweets of people saying that the fridge got the three count and so now the fridge should be the champion technically that's not true because they did say the match would start in the house of horrors and end in the ring and unless the fridge got to the ring and did it the fridge can't be the champion uh, and also the title wasn't on the line anyway so um sorry guys but uh yeah i still enjoyed seeing those tweets but uh yeah so the frustrating thing was that segment went on too long. They couldn't make it scary because this is a PG product. Um, it, there was no real surprises in it. There was a couple of nice moments. The fridge moment was cool. Um, there was also like a tractor driving backwards that was just weird. And there was a moment where uh, Randy Orton was about to hit Bray Wyatt with a frying pan. It was that kind of a thing. Um, the, the real frustration though came when they got back to the arena and when they got back to the arena and the fact that, you know, Bray had got into a limo and had been driven straight there and uh, he gets to the ring only to be greeted by Randy Orton, who's managed to get from under a fridge into some kind of transportation, get to the arena uh, all in the same amount of time it took Bray Wyatt. It's just illogical. It doesn't make sense. Um, and yeah, that I found that really frustrating. And then not only that, you know, the fact that Wyatt just couldn't win without the help of the Sing Brothers or the Sing Boys or the Bollywood Boys or whatever they're called this week. Uh, and Jinder Mahal had to come with the title and hit Randy Orton with the bell. It, uh, still Randy Orton, you know, was getting out of like Sister Abigail and all this kind of stuff. It took, it took a, a crazy amount to put Randy Orton away. Um, I just don't know why they can't build Bray Wyatt or why they won't build Bray Wyatt. Um, they just, they're so, they're so poor at building heels. So poor. Um, I mean, Braun Strowman, I mean, we'll get to it, but... It looked like Braun Strowman wasn't going to beat Roman Reigns tonight. Um, Roman Reigns really, you know, came out with one arm <laughs> and took Braun to the limit as well. It's just like, you, WWE need heels, need really strong heels so that then they can build even stronger baby faces. Um, but I don't, I just, they're just getting this wrong. And I thought they got this whole House of Horrors match wrong. 
Uh, after this, we had uh, Seth Rollins against Samoa Joe. Uh, this was wrong as well, in my opinion. I thought the match was great. There were some really good moments. Seth in particular, some really nice spots. Um, but yeah, Samoa Joe, again, just you're not building your heels, WWE. You're just building up Seth Rollins, um, which is fine. But who is Seth going to face? Brock, maybe? Is that your plan? I'm not sure. What are you going to do with Samoa Joe after this? I, You can't... The heels can't just be going around cheap shot in. They've got to look like legitimate threats in the ring. And that, for me, is where WWE are going wrong at the moment. I mean, Samoa Joe was on the offence. And then I can't remember what happened. It was like a bit of a fluke. One, two, three. Seth Rollins picked up the victory. So it wasn't like completely clean kind of win although it was clean um but yeah it's it's frustrating and really that sums up this whole pay-per-view um and then that just brought us to the main event and as you said you know there was a moment where i thought that roman was going to win uh braun did get the victory which is the right uh call um and then he started beating up on roman it's at this point i wondered if the shield were going to come out if we were going to get dean and seth we didn't uh, which was a real shame. Um, but they still, what they did with Roman was really cool. You know, they beat him up with the steps. The show finished. And then on Raw Talk, uh, Strowman was like, I haven't finished with you yet. Went running towards Roman Reigns. Roman got out the way. Braun barged into this ambulance door, took the door off the ambulance. It was insane. Uh, it was brilliant, uh, but insane. Um, but I mean, like Roman was selling like a like a god. He was like had blood everywhere. He was like holding onto his shoulder, holding onto his ribs. He was coughing up blood, and there's blood being like splattered on the walls. And no, it was really cool, brutal. Um, but it was really cool. It's, it's that's the kind of thing that the House of Horrors match needed. Um, I think they used up all the brutality. Uh, in the Braun Roman match, and then there was nothing for the House of Horrors. Um, but yeah, you know, all in all, this was okay. This pay per view was okay. There was enough in it to make it entertaining. I really enjoyed Bailey Alexa Bliss. That's probably the match that stands out the most for me. The crowd was so into that, so hot. Um, it was really cool. Um, and then, as I said, you know, to see what the House of Horrors was about. Uh, to see that beat down on Roman and the crowd were like, thank you, Strowman, and you deserve it. Uh, chance to Roman Reigns as well. It was really fun. Um, but as I said, there was quite a few frustrating moments as well. All in all, I'd give this a low, low six, maybe even a high five. But yeah, it was, it was, it was okay. I'd love to know your thoughts, guys. Drop it in the comments below. If you like the video, then please give it a like. Hit the subscribe if you haven't already. And hopefully, I'll see you again next time. Bye for now.